The year was 1991. Released in July was the first debut of The World of Darkness by White Wolf Publishing, a game called Vampire the Masquerade. The tabletop role-playing game would go on to become a hit, promising players a mature experience, especially when compared to tabletop role-playing games at the time that focused on heroics and or dragon slaying. Vampire would go on to spawn a sprawling scene in the live-action role-playing community, and several more books released in the world of darkness that would cover other supernatural entities and even the people bold enough to hunt them. Some of these game lines were successes, others not so much, including one particular game known as Wraith, the Oblivion. Known for its grim setting, where players play as wraiths who have passed on into the afterlife, the game was originally well received. Despite this, however, sales plummeted and it underperformed, being the first game line in the world of darkness to be cancelled in 1998. The reason? Was the game simply unplayable? Were fans not simply as enthused about the series as White Wolf was led to believe, still caught up in Vampire the Masquerade in previous titles? Or perhaps was the game itself cursed? At the end of the book, perhaps there lies an answer, in a passage titled Last Words. And so, without further ado, it's time to gather up a murder and dive into this story. 90s TTRPG dev thinks their game might be cursed. Last Words Learn the true topography. The monstrous and wonderful archetypes are not inside you, not inside your consciousness. You are inside them trapped and howling to get out. R.A. Lafferty, The Devil is Dead. Wraith is cursed. There's no other way to say it. Mind you, I don't believe in curses, but you can't argue with the facts. Something's going on. Getting this far has been a real miracle. Even as I write these last words, I keep looking behind my back, half expecting something to spring. It's been such a long, hard struggle. It's hard to believe it's nearly over. Everything that could go wrong, did go wrong. I've never seen anything like it. Contracts got screwed up. Schedules got mangled. Writers and artists disagreed. And everyone involved argued and fought endlessly. There was no end of emergencies. Nothing ever seemed to work out. Everything good about this project came about only with agonizing effort. All in all, it sucked. The curse began years ago, back in the early days of White Wolf, before the idea of vampire was even a glimmer in my mind. At the time, I was working on a brand new concept, a game I called Inferno, something I was very excited by. The idea was that you played someone trapped in hell, and your goal, basically, was to either become a powerful demon or to escape. You can probably see the similarities to Wraith already. Needless to say, it was a grim and loathsome setting, and I did everything I could to make it as dark as possible. I suppose that's really when my predilection for dark horror began. Naturally, no one was very excited about playing a character who would be tortured and branded and tricked on a regular basis. But as a favor to me, four of my friends came over for a playtest. We got together at the company offices, just a house, in the early evening, and quickly created characters. I had prepared what I considered to be a rather fitting welcome to hell, and all was set to make them pee their pants. I started out by killing off their characters one by one, in the most gruesome and macabre ways I could invent. Once they'd bit the bullet, I pulled them down into hell. They came, flying out of the sphincter of some enormous creature, and flew into a pool of molten lava. Each time they tried to crawl out, I had foul minion demons armed with pitchforks push them back. I described their prolonged agony in excruciating detail, and reveled in my expository skills. They only climbed out after I was good and ready. Let me tell you, I was on a storytelling high. I had the players completely under my thumb. If only they were as thrilled as I was. It didn't stop there. After they mounted a nearby precipice, 
a black bat-winged demon suddenly appeared before them. I stood over my hapless victims, all sitting on the couch, and began to chuckle my trademarked manic laugh. <laughs> Leaning over them, I yelled with impassioned venom about their impending doom, when suddenly there was a huge crash, and all the lights went out in the house. For a few seconds, no one spoke, no one moved. To tell the truth, I think they were scared shitless. No one knew what to think, least of all me. Finally, I figured I'd go outside and see what the hell had happened. Sitting at the bottom of our next door neighbor's driveway was a pizza delivery car that had crashed into an electrical transformer box. The idiot hadn't put his brakes on while dashing inside to deliver his pizza. 30 minutes are free, and to never realize he was parked on a damn hill. To make matters worse, by the time I got there, the ass munch was inside his car, trying to turn on the ignition. Underneath the rear axle, I could see the flicker of flames. For a second, I thought I was hallucinating. It was like my imagination come to life. After I chilled out from my panic, I ran halfway down the hill and yelled at him to get the hell out of the car. The moron didn't listen, so I tried again. Finally, I went down to the car and practically dragged him from the burning wreckage. A few minutes later, the car exploded into flames. A half minute after that, the gas tank blew up with a dull thump. I tried calling 911, but halfway through my call, an electrical spike took out every phone in the house, and the fax machine as well. Damn it all. Well, the whole neighborhood was without power now, so everyone came over to watch the bonfire and roast marshmallows. The big news was that the pizza driver didn't have insurance, which didn't please me any. The fire trucks eventually arrived. It was hours before it was all done, and the excitement had died down. Needless to say, the game was over for the night. Well, for eternity, actually. The lights weren't working, the phones weren't working, and no one wanted to face Mr. Demon again. So everyone went home. I was left in an empty house, without power, with a car hulk in my front yard. I had some strange dreams that night. The next day, I resolved that Mama Fate had given me a warning, and I packed away all my notes and called it quits with demons and doom. Enough strange things had happened that I figured it just wasn't wise to go on. After they towed away the car, all that was left was a swatch of burned grass and a sharp, twisted lump of metal with bits of glass embedded in it. I kept it as a memento and used it on my desk as a paperweight. A few months later, I came up with the idea for Vampire and the World of Darkness. Over time, I forgot all about Inferno. If only it had forgotten me. When it came time to work on Wraith, or Ghost as it was then known, Mr. Demon arose from the dead. Josh Timbrook had the temerity to suggest that I use some of the stuff from my old game. I had the lack of sense to agree, having forgotten about the curse. Thus was the curse reborn. From that moment on, nothing went right. I've never had so much trouble, pandemonium and bad blood, getting a project to the finish line. Now here I am, the last night before we have to ship everything off to the printers, and I'm trying to come up with clever words. It's four in the morning, and this is my third try on this essay. You should see the gibbering I've been writing so far. Even if these words suck, I'm not starting over again. Take it or leave it, I'm just glad it's over. Throughout the design of Wraith, I had this strange feeling, a powerful one, that I was going to die. It got so weird that I began to make preparations just in case. Stuart even made jokes about how he'd put my ashes in the ink when the book was printed. Was someone planning to kill me? Damn, who needs enemies? Strangely enough, this makes me all the more proud of what we've accomplished. I think this game is something special, and some of the blood spilled in its creation has strengthened it and made it more powerful. And some of the blood spilled in its creation has strengthened it and made it more powerful. I find our creation to be beautiful in spite of the pain.
and perhaps because of it. And I hope you do as well. I hope you get something out of it. Something real and true. Remember, I don't believe in curses. But if bad things start happening in your life, you have been warned. Is the curse real? Or was it all just pretentious rambling spawned out of a story based in a traumatic event? After all, such pretentiousness was accustomed to much of the writing of the World of Darkness books in the 90s. Maybe something in between. I leave it up to you to decide. True or false, Wraith was the first in the original World of Darkness lines of tabletop role-playing games to be cancelled. The obvious answer is due to low sales. Or perhaps, the curse was at work. And even after, it was still respected by Onyx Path Publishing when they worked on the 20th anniversary edition of the game, which released a few years back. Funnily enough, it was plagued with multiple delays during its production, releasing in 2018, three years after the Kickstarter's promised delivery date. But that could easily just be an excuse for mismanagement. Who could tell? Thank you for listening to today's story. And if you liked today's story and would like to see more of them, then please consider subscribing to The Crow's Perch. And if you made it this far, then why not leave a comment? And if you can't think of a comment, then leave the comment, curse, so that way I know you made it to the end of today's story. And if you would like to support the channel even further, then please consider becoming one of my patrons, like our Counts of Quills, like Hexblading, Shar K, Kirito Kazuto, Critical Kunik, Evix, King Drazil, Christian Pip, Cosmosis, Rikus, Vincent, Haley Thompson, Zero Fang, and Netscape Navigator. Oh, you can join our barons of beaks, like Ars Torok, Ghost Legan. Mr. Hypocritical, Javon Megan, Jesse Shodell, Kunto Sweezel, Moet is Mao, Chunky Salsa, Tech Blog, Corristor, Cardespawn, A Modest Pastry, Jester King, Gentle, Lord Rend, Gibber Woods, Wormy, Den of the Drake, McEatley, and Ornia. Or you can join our Dukes of Feathers. Like Kai, the cool one. That Scorbus. Mirage Vaxus. Shiro, Tatsuma, Quinn, the Forgotten Druid. Jared Sewer, Lose Otters, Jared Samlin, Doc Salty 96, Matthew McQueeny, and Haygroth. And with all of that out of the way, I'll see you next time. As the Crow Flies. <laughs>